Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Erin and today I'm going to teach you about one of my favorite brand elevation strategies that I've used in many different companies across a bunch of different industries and it's something called the halo effect. So if you're looking to bring more credibility to your brand, gain access to top tier potential clients or customers, and benefit from a strong network effect, even if you have a small team or small budget, keep watching. So before we dive into how to leverage this strategy in your own business, let's first unpack what the halo effect is. So in 1920, Edward Thorndike, an American psychologist studying the psychology of learning, wrote an article called A Constant Error in Psychological Ratings. This is where the term halo effect was first used. Thorndike was the first to say that the halo effect was a specific cognitive bias in which one aspect of a person, brand, product, or institution affects one's thoughts or judgment of the entity's other aspects or dimensions. So while Thorndike originally coined the term referring only to people, its use has been greatly expanded into the areas of brand marketing. And this is where it gets interesting. In an article written by ISFA, the author shared that business business owners and marketers can create leverage, awareness, and use the halo effect by associating their businesses with other successful brands. This association is intended to elicit positive, endearing, impactful thoughts and emotions of high quality, performance, and reputation. Now, your creative brain might instantly jump to strategies like influencer marketing, co-branding, partnerships, etc. You would not be wrong in thinking this. But unfortunately, many brands can't pull off the budget required for things like large-scale influencer campaigns, nor do they have a dedicated partnerships team. For these companies, using the halo effect might actually seem a little out of reach. I've got good news for you though. The halo effect can be used by any brand or company, regardless of team size or budget. All right, let's dive in. So whenever I've worked with startups, I've always looked for ways to elevate the brand, build awareness, and establish credibility with prospects and customers by leveraging the halo effect. An easy way to do this is to create opportunities for influencers, well-known industry professionals, or larger brands to engage with your company. All right, I'm going to give you three of the ways that I've used this in almost every company that I've worked with, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can get creative and really think about how you can bring in the halo effect into your brand or company in whatever way makes sense for you. So the simplest way to do this is through your blog. If you know who your target audience is, which I'm hoping you do, think about the brand brands or companies that would be amazing to have as customers. Then go and interview them for your blog. For example, Noibu, an Ottawa-based startup that helps its e-commerce customers detect and resolve shopping cart errors, interviews C-suite executives from brands that are right within their wheelhouse. Harry Rosen, David's Tea, and Destination Maternity, just to name a few. If any of those companies are not yet a customer of Noibu's, this would be a fantastic opportunity for them to get on their radar in a way that isn't sales oriented. Noibu also benefits greatly if any of those interviewees share the article with their networks, as the people that follow a C-suite exec at Harry Rosen, for example, are likely also within Noibu's target audience. The other benefit is that you now have an indexed article that has your brand name paired with the brand name of a bigger company, which lends credibility to your brand for anyone who might be hearing about you for the very first time. Another opportunity to leverage the halo effect is through a podcast. Gong, a sales and revenue intelligence platform, has a podcast called Reveal, where they interview sales innovators that rely heavily on data to win their market. Similarly to the blog interviews process, hosting your own podcast and inviting key guests on the show can do a lot to elevate your brand awareness and boost credibility, but also get on the radar of the guests you're having on the show. With podcasts specifically, they usually have to go through some sort of internal approval process at the larger brand, which means that your company and the purpose of the interview are now floating around internally at the company that you've invited on your show. If you look at Gong's podcast lineup, they've had execs on the show from Amazon, IBM, MongoDB, Privy, and more. A high percentage of those execs also shared their episode out onto their own social profiles, which boosts the network effect of a single piece of content, 
which has huge, huge value. The third example that I'll leave you with today is events. You can do this strategy with in-person or virtual events, and the premise is the same as the blog and the podcast interviews. If you host events, invite speakers from brands that your target audience absolutely loves, and not only will you have a more successful event that is highly attended, but the audience will also be filled with the right people who will now learn about your company too. Drift is fantastic at this and leverages virtual events often to both connect with its audience and attach its brand to well-known companies and influencers. From the outside looking in, Drift has done a great job co-branding its events with other companies, which creates a ton of leverage for both parties and a lot of value for both of their audiences. Okay, I have shared a ton of information with you today, but hopefully you're beginning to truly see how you can take advantage of the network effect and the halo effect in your business, even if you don't have a ton of budget to spare. If you have any questions about anything I've covered today, let me know in the comments below. I reply to every comment on my channel and I try my best to answer questions in follow-up videos or on social. And speaking of social, be sure to connect with me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, or TikTok as I share content there too on branding, marketing, productivity, and entrepreneurship. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. Bye.